It's been a while since I opened the door back in time to WWE 2001. But now it is time for Judgment Day. It is time as we pick it up in a on a different screen. As you can see, there's a lot of people away with booking restrictions. But there's reasons why they they are, and well, there's reasons why they're not. Well, actually, no. Everybody there is there for a reason. But either way, it's time for the first pay per view of the campaign with my matches, my feuds. All up and down the card, because if you haven't noticed, thus far since the start, I've really been booking using WWE's platform feuds, rather than my own feuds. I mean, rather rather than coming up with my own. But this, this build to Judgment Day has been centered around my feuds. Yes, I know China and Lita and Haku and Rikishi, uh, China and Lita, and... Brothers of Destruction versus Haku and Rikishi were both feuds in real life, but, um, well, can't change everything. Um, when it's the first match, I'm already struggling to pick who's gonna win. Uh,. Let's not book this match first. Let's book this match first. As we're going to have Edge and Christian hold on to the tag team titles. Um... Then we also have this. Right here. With Benoit, Hunter, and Austin. In a world title match. Um, well, the only title that's not going to be on the line is Kane's hardcore title. Because he's going to be in a tag team match. Um, Austin, hmm, yep, just get rid of this, and back. <sighs> I mean, it'd be nice to take a cut into Austin's, you know, hundred, but I think I'm going to go this route. Of letting Austin keep the belt. Instead. Mm. Whoop. 56. 62. They won. Mm. I'm gonna let them win by DQ after interference from Stevie. So they get the better of him this time. Sort of, but the numbers game is still a factor as Stevie and RTC once again beat down the Dudley Boys. Eddie beats, uh, I mean, Eddie beats Jeff. No doubt who's winning this one. Nope, not going that long. Haku and Rikishi, no, I'm gonna kill the Undertaker. 
Um, huh. I'm just inputting the matches now, and then I'm gonna put the angles in after. Um, hmm. Who takes it? See, Rocky put over Big Show clean, mind you, and continued the boost of the Big Show's popularity because he took a chunk of rocks, but Rock is still a 90 freaking 8. So, yeah. Um. Already ran the draw on Raw. Um. Hmm. Keep that in mind. I'll go back. Um. Women's title. China's held it two months. China's gonna keep it. At least for right now. You know what, let's do that as a buffer match. And let's do this as a buffer match. As the lightweight title will be defended, Shovel versus Scotty Too Hottie, and Shovel keeps the belt. Successful title reign number one for Shavo Guerrero. And then we have this, and the reason for the buffer match, as Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho collide for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, I butchered this one just like I did um, this one. Yeah, that one was really bad because I forgot to take care of one of the title reigns and the title reign basically just stayed. Basically, the title reign that they're supposed to have is number six, not number seven. But who's counting? Well, me, but still. Um, huh. How does Chris win? Um, how about Kurt wins, but the finish? I wish they had accidental count out. Like, picture this. Picture both Chris and Kurt are fighting outside, and the count, and the refs counting and counting and counting, and then suddenly you hear ten, and then we realize Kurt Angle is in the ring, but his opponent is outside the ring because. Kurt didn't think before he slid back in the ring. He didn't take, he didn't take, um, he didn't take, what's his name, with him, Jericho, and Jericho was on the ground, which led Jericho to get counted out without Kurt realizing, and allows Jericho to retain the title, Without Kurt taking the fall, and now as for what I'm doing, as for what I'm doing here, we are setting up a number one contender hardcore title match with Test, Raven, Rhino, and Big Boss Man being the guys in between the match. Um, and there was another match I wanted to do. Oh yeah, Matt Hardy. I wanted to include Matt Hardy on the show. Matt vs. his old rival, Dean Malenko. I hope you've been picking it up this entire time, because I feel like I 
just realized I've been talking to the right side, I mean the left side of the microphone this entire time. So I hope you've been picking it up. Okay, so now let's put together some video packages. Steve, Chris, Hunter. Kurt and Chris. Not all the matches are going to have it, just the matches that I feel like need it. Um, like the opener is not going to have it. Jericho and Jeff aren't going to have it. Um, it was a match. Um, how about this? Any of them over a 70 will get it. Them two. They got it already. Okay, so I'm going to give it to Edge and the APA. And I'm going to give it to the women. Not Chad Patton. China. Lita. Ow. Damn it. Um... You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do two more and give one to the Brothers of Destruction versus Rikishi and Haku too. The reason why I'm giving it five minutes is not because I genuinely give it five minutes, it's because when you don't give it enough time, the game penalizes you, so usually when I give it four minutes, the game penalizes me, so I'm not going to let the game penalize me. I'm going to do it my way, and do it like that. Kane, Rikishi, and Haku. I don't care if they penalize me for that one. Um... Uh, Jeff, Kevin Kelly, hmm. And then we move, we do some other promos with, oh shit, I just remembered the Rock and Big Show never, I never picked a winner. Um, put that there. I'm pretty sure 300 minutes is the actual maximum for... Uh, pay-per-views like this. I just don't know because I don't have it turned on. The time constraints. I should, I know. But I just don't. Um, so now we go another match. I mean, another segment. Kevin Kelly with Chris Benoit. 
You know what? Revisiting their rivalry. Because they have the rivalry. They had the problems. Going as far back, or going as close to this pay-per-view as February. They had problem. They finished their feud in February. You know what I mean? So they had problems for a very long time. And I'm also just booking this match because William Regal, I want William Regal to be featured on the pay-per-view, so yeah. Oh, who knew William and Ron Killings would have uh, great chemistry, and uh, yeah, Regal won. So, good match, good good pre-show match. And the pay-per-view kicks off, Scotty Too Hotty comes up short against Chavo Guerrero. As Chavo successfully defends his WWF lightweight title. And not only that, he it is his first successful title defense in the WWF in general. So congratulations to Chavo. And now we move to the second match of the night. And it's another title match. As the APA challenged the champions, Edge and Christian, for the tag team titles. What... A match. Edge and Christian, 90 in-ring performance, 86 in-ring performance, a 78 overall rating. If the match, if the match would have gotten more time, then the, probably would have, probably could have done a little bit better, but I'm still happy with it. I'm still very happy with a 78. I'm still very happy with a 78. There's no doubt, there's no doubt. I'm, I'm extremely happy with it. And now we move to Kevin Kelly's interview with Eddie Guerrero and displaying the reason why I don't like to use Kevin Kelly in a segment. And why this is the only segment Kevin Kelly is actually used in, it's because he does more harm than good. But either way, Eddie carried the segment, built up his match against Jeff Hardy, and Eddie Guerrero gets the victory against Jeff Hardy to successfully defend his European title once again against one half of the Hardy Boys coming up short but now the question is what happens next does this mean that the feud's over between Jeff and the Hardy I mean Eddie and the Hardys or does this mean that this feud is just beginning you'll have to you'll have to wait to find that out because Eddie did win clean but where does Matt fit on uh, where does Matt fit into all this speaking of Matt he competes in the next match against Dean Malenko and Matt Hardy gets the win in what I believe to be one of his first pay-per-view singles matches. So congrats to Matt on that one. And maybe, just maybe, this puts Matt into title contention in some form or fashion. Now we move to The Rock as he builds up his match later tonight against The Big Show. And the rematch... Supply and Demand versing the Dudley Boys. The du and the Dudley Boys get the win via DQ after Stevie Richards run runs in and attacks them. This means numbers plays a part again. Well, just imagine that, that the Dudley Boys are left laying by the right to center to get the heat back on RTC following the match. And now we move to a number one contender hardcore match with Bossman, Rhino, Raven, and Test contesting, or f fighting to find out who's challenging Kane next for the WWF hardcore title. And Raven is the lucky person who beat the Bossman in this fatal four-way hardcore match and will challenge Kane for the hardcore title. 
Of course, Test and the Boss Men aren't good in hardcore matches, so I basically just sacrificed the rating, but the rating wasn't that bad. And because I never went back and changed it, The Rock defeated The Big Show. No big deal. This feud was never going to be a long-term feud. But now it's just the idea that 50-50 booking at its finest, that means we have one more match. But that one more match will be at King of the Ring. And I just want to say that no... The five-star match between Shane McMahon and Kurt Angle is not going to happen at King of the Ring 2001 because Shane McMahon has no reason to come back, especially as a heel, so maybe it'll happen next year. But either way, The Rock gets the win in a surprisingly good match. Well, when The Rock gets a uh, hundred in-ring performance, it's kind of hard to believe that it's not going to be a good match. So we move forward with the Brothers of Destruction and Rikishi and Haku's video package playing. And then we see the feud continue with Rikishi and Haku obviously falling victim to the Brothers, to the brothers of Destruction. Coming up short with Kane uh, and the Undertaker defeating the Oddball team pretty handily. Well, I wouldn't say pretty handily. It went a little bit of time, but, you know, I mean, I, I, I it's a 76. I like the. It was a good match. It was a good match. Now we move to the women's title match. With China getting the victory over Lita and... I mean, I'm happy with the match. I'm very happy with the match. I, you know, with China, with Lita on the brink of coming into her own. I'm kind of happy I kept the belt on China and not and di and didn't switch it to Lita. But that doesn't mean that this feud is over, and that doesn't mean that Lita won't get it eventually. Because I may not get it eventually. Because if you look at it, the first thing that's highlighted. On the bottom in the road agent report is that China and Lita have great chemistry and it showed in their performance. Which means that opens the door for another match between these two. And now we have a backstage segment with Austin and Hunter. And Hunter basically tells Steve, How about this, Austin? I hate you, you hate me. These people didn't come to see Chris Benoit. These people came to see me end your career and take your title. So how about we partner up and take out Chris Benoit and then me and you go one on one. And Austin just looks at him, says... I don't need to make an alliance with you to keep this. I'll beat both your asses and stomp a mud hole in you specifically for even offering. Well, before Austin, Hunter, and Benoit enter the ring in a triple threat, we need one new match. Benoit, I mean Jericho... Kurt Angle. 89. <laughs> 89. I tried to explain it earlier that basically Kurt's not going to realize where the number is as far as the count out is concerned, or the count is concerned, and then that's going to let Chris Jericho lay on the outside, yes, this may be heelish for Chris to do, considering he's the babyface Intercontinental Champion, but, but, it's also now planting the seeds for Chris's heel turn if I choose to put him a, make him a heel later in the year. I'm happy with that segment, 88. 88 final rating for the, for the main event. Benoit with an 87, 
Hunter with a 96. Austin with a 100. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy with this. And just just noticing it, Austin got an 100, right? Taker got a 97. Rock got an 100. Hell, Hunter got a 96. I can't imagine, I can't imagine how good the matches would be if I put Austin against The Rock again, or Austin against Taker, or The Rock versus Hunter, and they did half as good as they do right now. Because Benoit got an 87 in-ring performance and was the weakest link in the match. You know, things are finally, I think, knock on wood, starting to look up for this season because an 87 pay-per-view final rating, whew, what a pay-per-view. I gotta say that, what a pay-per-view. What a freaking pay-per-view. It definitely defied my expectations. I did not expect... I didn't expect The Rock and Big Show to do as good. Hell, I sure as hell didn't expect that Fatal 4-Way to do as good as it did. A 75 with uh, Raven, Big Show, Bossman, and Test. I mean, Bossman, Test, and Rhino. Hell, Matt Hardy and Dean Malenko, Eddie Guerrero and Jeff Hardy. You know, a lot of these matches did a lot better than I thought they would have. It was, I mean, yes, I did forget some segments, like picture right to censor beating me down, the Dudley boys following the match, and, well, no, that was the only segment I forgot, so, I mean, that's not that bad, because technically they still did, but it wasn't a separate segment, it was just right after the match. But either way, I, I am very happy with this show, very happy. Let me know down in the comment section below what you thought of this show, if you like the direction that this company is going, and uh, that the company is going, and no, I didn't forget it, something is going to change with the invasion starting tomorrow night on Raw, so stay tuned. So watch this video, and then stay tuned for the next one, because it's going to happen in the next video, and you'll find out the next step in the invasion what it might be. What could it be? You're going to have to wait and find out on Monday Night Raw. But for right now, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe to the channel for more, uh, and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. And maybe next time I'll remember this is why I don't add new stuff into the, into the outro, because I usually end up butchering it. But till next time. Later.